6, 12 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. My name is Andy Tran. I'm a quality engineer here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Thank you for tuning in for our 18th launch of Starlink this year and SpaceX's 27th mission of 2021. Starlink is a satellite internet constellation designed and manufactured by SpaceX that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. Today's launch will be our fourth rideshare mission of the year. This launch will be a longer one as we are reverting to a circular orbital insertion, which requires two burns of the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. We are doing this as it is a mission requirement for our rideshare customer flying on board tonight. Inside the fairing at the top of the rocket, there are 48 Starlink satellites and two Black Sky satellites. Black Sky is a global monitoring company that combines space assets with advanced AI and machine learning analysis to provide customers a first-to-know advantage. I'll share a few more details about these payloads a bit later in the webcast. Uh, as for the 48 Starlink satellites, they will be inserted into low Earth orbit and bring us one step closer to near global coverage of the populated world in 2021. The latest weather forecast shows about 90% favorable chance of liftoff today. The vehicle, the satellites, and range are all looking good to support an on-time liftoff just uh, over 11 minutes from now. Uh, let's take a closer look at the rocket that you see on screen. Falcon 9, our two-stage launch vehicle, stands about 70 meters tall, and when it's fully fueled, it'll hold just over 1 million pounds of propellant that the vehicle will burn through in less than three minutes after liftoff. We prep Falcon 9 for launch in our hangar at the base of the pad. Upon completing final checkouts, Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad with the Starlink and Black Sky payloads and went vertical on Monday around 5 p.m. Eastern Time. From there, we had successful static fire of our nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage yesterday. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is what we refer to as the first stage. You may be able to see the soot markings left over from this booster's previous eight flights supporting the GPS-33 mission, Turksat 5A, Transporter 2, and five previous Starlink missions. The first stage accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. Following separation from the second stage, we'll be attempting to recover our first stage for a ninth time on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, staged off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see it on screen right now. If successful, it will make the 89th recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage and 96 total first stage landings if you include our Falcon Heavy booster recoveries. On top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber interstage, and then on top of that is the Falcon 9 second stage, which has a single Merlin, Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine. Once the first and second stages separate at about two and a half minutes into the mission, the MVAC engine will ignite and carry the Starlink satellites and two Black Sky satellites to a low Earth orbit around the Earth. The stack of satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, uh, which you see on screen right now. This protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continue, continues its journey to orbit. Just as we reuse the Falcon 9, we recover and reuse our fairing halves as well. The fairing halves we're using today are brand new, and we're going to be attempting to recover these halves using our recovery vessel, Bob. Propellants have been loading on the vehicle since the T-minus 35-minute mark. Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant vehicle, which means it uses two propellants, a fuel and an oxidizer. An oxidizer is a type of chemical that a fuel requires in order to burn. Most things here on Earth burn using oxygen, uh, which is readily available in the Earth's atmosphere. But in space, there is no atmosphere to provide oxygen or other oxidizers, so the rocket needs to carry up their own. In Falcon 9's case, it's super-chilled liquid oxygen called LOX. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point so that it can become what we call densified, which means it has a much greater amount of mass per volume, and we can load more of it onto the booster. For fuel, we use a refined form of kerosene known as RP-1. In addition to its propellants, Falcon 9 also needs an ignition source in order to go, and for that we use the chemical TTAB, or triethyl aluminum and, and triethyl borane. Currently, fuel is uh, nearly fully loaded on the first stage and starting to load on the second stage. Once all tanks are full, both stages will continue to be topped off with propellant until about the T-minus two minute mark to keep temperatures as cold as possible. 
Again, weather is looking fantastic for tonight's liftoff. Uh, the vehicle and satellites uh, in the fairing, um, they are uh, remaining good as well. Uh, we are targeting an on-time liftoff just under seven and a half minutes from now. And as I mentioned earlier, today's mission marks the fourth official mission under SpaceX's SmallSat rideshare program this year, which gives small satellites flexible access to what is now the most flown operational rocket in the United States, the Falcon 9. Tonight, we're flying 48 Starlink satellites to make room for two black sky payloads from our customer spaceflight. In an effort to make to help Black Sky rapidly expand its growing constellation of high revisit satellites, Spaceflight Incorporated is managing the launch of these two additional Black Sky high resolution multispectral Gen 2 satellites to low Earth orbit, expanding Black Sky's network in space and offering of real time geospatial intelligence and monitoring services. Black Sky combines high resolution images captured by its constellation of microsatellites with its proprietary artificial intelligence software to deliver analytics and insights to industries including transportation, infrastructure, land use, defense, supply chain management, and humanitarian aid. So far this year, we've launched over 200 rideshare payloads to orbit. And this includes the ones launched on the Transporter 1 mission in January, a previous Starlink launch in May, and the Transporter 2 mission in June. After this mission, our next rider mission is scheduled to launch at the beginning of next year, and that's going to be Transporter 3, which will be a dedicated rideshare share launch to sun-synchronous orbit. As part of our SmallSat rideshare program, we offer three dedicated rideshare missions to sun-synchronous orbits per year, as well as launch opportunities on our Starlink missions with, like what you're seeing here today. So we are about five and a half minutes from liftoff of our 18th Starlink launch of 2021. And the Falcon 9 is progressing into the final stages of the countdown. Next up, the truss structure next to the vehicle known as the transporter erector. We also refer to it as the TE. It will begin to start to retract away from the Falcon 9 vehicle. In preparation for retracting, the TE clamp arms will open up and then the transport director will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly to its pre-launch position about two degrees from the vehicle. Then at T0, hydraulics pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. The transport director is also the structure that provides liquids, gases, uh, electrical connections uh, to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. And the vehicle is continuing to load propellant. Once we're fully topped off, we'll have over 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. On screen right now is a view of the fairing. Right beneath the fairing, those are the clamp arms that we are expecting to open up. And here they go. Once these clamp arms open up, you, we should start to see the truss structure begin to recline away from Falcon 9 in preparation for liftoff. So again, we are continuing to load propellant on both the stages. The first and second stages should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from one another. The first stage finishing up around the T minus three minute mark and the second stage finishing up around the T minus two minute mark. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. Uh, this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin 1D engines, and then we're set for liftoff. The Starlink payload and the Black Sky payloads inside the fairing continue to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues at this time. So we're starting to hear some hissing and popping. Uh, this is a venting from our LOX lines as part of the transporter erectors. 
uh, job to continue to fill the, the vehicle with propellant. Uh, we can also start to see some white clouds forming around the Falcon 9. Uh, this will uh, become more and more prominent as we get closer to T-Zero. Uh, this is just that super cold liquid oxygen starting to densify and um, uh, form those clouds that you start to see when it meets the warmer ambient uh, air temperatures of Florida. So again, we have a pretty much perfect weather in Florida for today's liftoff attempt. This is a rideshare mission carrying 48 Starlink satellites as well as two Black Sky satellites enclosed in the fairing that you see on screen right now. And there goes those hissing and popping. That is normal and expected at this stage in the countdown. At this point, the propellant has been fully loaded on the vehicle, and we are just under a minute away. Uh, both stages should be beginning to pressurize for liftoff. So we are 40 seconds away. Let's listen in to terminal count as we prepare for liftoff of the 48 Starlink satellites and the two Black Sky satellites. T minus 30 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds of counting. T-minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition, liftoff. Nominal power and telemetry. So we are about a minute into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In just a few seconds here, we are expecting the call out for max Q. That is the period where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Max Q. And there was the call out. So now that we've gone uh, past the period of high stresses on the vehicle, we have three events happening in quick succession in about a minute. First, we have uh, main engine cutoff, also referred to as MECO. Uh, then stage separation, followed by second engine start one, also known as SES one. Main engine cutoff is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. During stage separation, the first and second stage will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to Earth for landing, while the second stage continues its journey with our satellites uh, with the third event, which is uh, second engine start one. The single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will then ignite and continue to propel those um, Starlink satellites and Black Sky satellites into orbit.
Nico. Stage separation confirmed. So you can see on screen we had successful main engine cutoff, uh, followed by stage separation. And on the right hand side of the screen, that is the single Merlin vacuum engine going red hot. Uh, on the left hand side of the screen is the view of our first stage. Uh, I think we're getting some views of the of twilight right now as the sun has just set uh, in the east coast. In a few seconds, we are expecting fairing deploy, and that will expose the satellites to the vacuum of space. Fairing separation confirmed. We got the audio and video confirmation on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, the fairing halves have deployed. We are going to attempt to recover those uh, using our recovery vessel Bob later on in the mission. Uh, for now, the uh, mission is going great. Uh, again, uh, the left hand side is a view from the top of our first stage looking downward. Um, you can see little plumes of gas coming out. That is nitrogen uh, for our, uh, as part of our attitude control system to help orient the, the first stage booster properly as it makes its way back to attempt its ninth landing on our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, right hand side is a view of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine, the uh, 48 Starlink satellites and the two Black Sky satellites that we had mentioned earlier. They are signal, on the Bermuda. opposite end of that engine. And so again, they are um, going to be um, in this burn for another couple of minutes um, as they continue to make their way to low Earth orbit. So in order to make its way back to the uh, drone ship, the first stage needs to execute two burns. Uh, the first is an entry burn where three of the Merlin 1D engines uh, will ignite. Uh, this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn, and this will bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. Trajectory nominal. That first burn, the entry burn, is expected to start around T plus 6 minutes and 22 seconds and last for about 20 seconds. For those that are just joining us, we are in the middle of SpaceX's 27th mission of 2021. Both stages have separated. We did have a successful liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40. Things are continuing to go well for tonight's mission. So we are about 20 seconds away from the beginning of that entry burn on the first stage. Uh, we do have camera views right now. It is a little dark, but as soon as that entry burn starts, we should see that first stage um, being lit up as it will slow itself down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, entry burn start up. On flight termination system is saved. All right, three engines have relit on the first stage. If you're keeping track, the bottom left-hand side of the screen, there is a um, speedometer of sorts. That is tracking the velocity of the first stage. You can see that we're starting to reduce that stage velocity. One, burn, shut down. If you keep an eye on that, as soon as the first stage hits the denser parts of the atmosphere, we'll continue to slow down um, its speed in preparation for the next burn, the landing burn. And that landing burn is... Uh, expected to happen a few seconds after the T plus eight minute mark. Trajectory nominal. The MVAC engine performance on the second stage continues to go well. A few seconds after we complete the landing burn, uh, we are expecting to turn off this engine and enter a coast phase. And 
And as a reminder, we will be reigniting this tonic? engine about 50 minutes from now. Um, Stage one, land and burn. There's the call out. Uh, the landing burn has begun. Terminal guidance. In just a few seconds here, we're going to see if we can land this first stage booster for the ninth time. Stage one, land and leg deploy. You can hear the cheer and the applause, and there's the visual. This first stage booster has landed nine times. This stage marks our 89th overall successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. Cape. And the 129th successful two, flight of a saved. Falcon 9 first stage. So what we're waiting on now is confirmation of second engine cutoff, as Not well as insertion. confirmation of a good orbital insertion. As I was speaking, we did get that confirmation. Um, so the second stage, uh, with all of its satellites, are entering a coast phase for about 50 minutes. We're going to leave you with some space tunes, and we'll be back here at the T-plus 59-minute mark. Acquisition of signal, Newfoundland. Loss of signal, Bermuda.
as you signal, you can let go. Position of signal, and go.
Expected loss of signal. Good hailing.
universidad.
satellite which brings into the realm of possibility all those wild science fiction stories of interplanetary travel. It's fascinating. Garcia.
Welcome back. If you are just joining us, if you're just joining us, a quick recap of today's mission. We had successful liftoff of from Tasmania. Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 6:12 p.m. Eastern Time. We then had successful stage separation. We covered our first stage after its ninth flight on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, and had a successful second stage MVAC engine burn. We are now waiting on the second relight of the second stage, uh, Merlin vacuum engine, and this burn should last just a few seconds. MVAC ignition. Deco 2. So we just saw uh, that very, very short clip there. Um, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage ignited for a few seconds. Then we also got confirmation of a good uh, second engine cutoff. So we are waiting on confirmation of a good orbit on the second stage. We are Not all orbit, sorry, sir. Uh, a few minutes away from the first payload deploy, and we did hear the confirmation of good, good orbital insertion. Um, that was a spectacular shot of the second stage uh, with the Earth in the background. Uh, what the second stage does at deployment is actually largely determined by customer requirements and make sure that the payloads don't run into each other. For this particular mission, we have two rideshare payloads in addition to the Starlink satellite stack. The rideshare payloads are deployed while the stage is not spinning. Uh, here they are on screen. Uh, by contrast, the Starlink stack is always deployed while spinning. Uh, the, uh, we actually spin at a rate at about three degrees per second. Uh, this creates a small difference in velocity between the individual Starlink satellites, allowing them to separate over time. So again, we are about two and a half minutes away from the first black sky satellite from deploying. Uh, de from deploying. Again, we do have two of them on, on board today, and they will be deploying about three minutes apart from one another. And this shot right here, um, you can start to see the Starlink stacks. Um, some interesting notes about the Starlink. Each of those satellites are about 500 pounds. Um, we, when we deploy them, we'll uh, deploy them into low Earth orbit, but then over the next couple of days and weeks, they'll actually fire their onboard thrusters to get to their final operational orbit. Um, the Starlink satellites operate at about 550 kilometers uh, um, in altitude, and by contrast, the International Space Station um, is orbiting the Earth at about 400 kilometers, so the Starlink stacks are um, operating a, a little bit higher than the International Space Station. So again, we are waiting on the first deployment of the Black Sky satellite. It's going to happen uh, about a minute from now. It is the first of three payload deployments. Our first and second pay payloads, um, are again, are about three minutes apart. Black Sky is a global monitoring company that combines space assets with advanced AI and machine learning analysis to provide customers a first-to-know advantage. For now, as we wait, we are enjoying some awesome views of the second stage um, space and the Earth. And as we continue to orbit around the Earth, we uh, are trying to connect to ground stations here on the floor. And so we'll periodically lose some signals, but um, you can see that uh, we're, we're trying to get the signals back and the video footage back um, as much as possible as we uh, hopefully can see the Black Sky satellites deploying from the top of the second stage. Level 12 payload deploy confirmed. 
So we did get audio confirmation. I am looking on screen right now to see if we can see it visually. Uh, again, the two Black Sky satellites are actually positioned at the top of the stack. And so the, the um, objects, if you will, that are closest to the screen, those are the Starlink satellites. So uh, we didn't quite get the visual confirmation of the first satellite. Maybe we'll get the second one. Um, but again, we are about three minutes away from the second deployment of the Black Sky satellite. That one interesting thing to note as we continue to get this view here is uh, in space and, and maybe without a point of reference, things seem to look very, very stagnant. Um, if you look at the bottom right hand side of your screen, we are actually traveling at 26,000 kilometers an hour uh, around the Earth. And this is really to, um, this is close to orbital velocity, but at those speeds, you could pretty much travel uh, end to end from America in about 10 minutes. So uh, even though it doesn't look like we're moving very, very quickly, the second stage and the satellites are indeed zipping around the Earth. So right now the second stage is actually uh, just a little bit south and east of Australia. It's continuing to head east. And we are about a minute away from the second Black Sky satellite deployment. For those that are just joining, we did have successful deployment of our first Black Sky satellite. This is the fourth rideshare mission of 2021 uh, for us here at SpaceX and the 27th mission overall. Just about 15 seconds away from our expected deployment of the second and final Black Sky satellite. Global 13, payload deploy confirmed. And that is great news. We've now successfully deployed the two Black Sky satellites on behalf of our customer spaceflight. We are wishing them bon voyage to the two Black Sky sats. And it was our pleasure to give you a lift today. With that, we are awaiting the deployment of our 48 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about 20 minutes from now. At the time of the, the, of the deployment, we won't actually have ground station coverage, but we'll return just before we acquire a signal to the South Texas station, uh, about T plus one hour and 32 minutes to get confirmation of that deployment. We will see you back here in just a few moments.
25th century AD. We sat there and looked at the rockets from Mars and she just boggled the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up to them.
now I'll separate from the front. Acquisition of signal, South Texas. Welcome back one final time. Uh, if you're just joining us, we had a successful liftoff at 6.12 p.m. Eastern time. We saw a successful stage separation. We saw second engine start and second engine cut off successfully twice on the second stage. We were also able to land our first stage booster for the ninth time on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. And then about 20 minutes ago, we successfully deployed the two Black Sky satellites. Uh, we were expecting the Starlink satellites to deploy around the T plus one hour and 29 minute mark. And at that time, we didn't have ground station coverage. So right now we should be coming um, in the range of South Texas ground station um, and uh, getting confirmation of the Starlink satellites deploying. So I am hearing that we did indeed get confirmation of those 48 Starlink satellites deploying. Um, that is the 34th launch of Starlink to date, which means that we've launched nearly 2,000 Starlink satellites thus far. With that said, all of the payloads on today's, missions, uh, on today's mission have reached their intended orbit. Uh, for now, we will be bringing our webcast to an end. Uh, would like to thank the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission and to our customer Spaceflight. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. If you are interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to Starlink.com. Thank you again for watching and we will see you next time.